YouTube. I am back with another reaction video and we got when old NBA legends expose young stars I know this got to be a good story right here because I definitely see Larry Bird on the front so I wonder who he's about to expose so I'm pretty sure he exposed a lot of people and that's one of the reasons why I came to this video and wanted to do this video because I know this is a good one and I saw Larry Bird on it but uh, yeah, let's get straight into this video, y'all. Let's see what this is hitting for. Old NBA legends. Expose young stars. Let's get it. And today I am back in the video. Shout out to Uncle Hoops. Here with this time once again, we're going to look at some NBA legends who owned young rookies as well as young stars. And in this video, we're going to look at the best players of all time, the players I refer to as the GOATs. Guys like Mary Bird, Michael Jordan, Tim Duncan, Kobe, as well as LeBron. And before we get into this video, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to do so. And if you could like this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So first up on our list, we have one Larry Bird. And as you guys know, Bird is one of the best trash talkers, if not the best trash talker in NBA history. And anytime he could dominate a rookie, he took pleasure in doing so. And one rookie who found out the hard way was a young Sean Kemp in 1989. And to give some backstory at this point in time, Bird was 33 and Sean Kemp was 20. And only a few years prior, Kemp, coming out of Indiana, had broken a lot of Bird's high school records. So going to this matchup, Bird had some added fuel to dominate a young Sean Kemp. That's definitely what he did, as in this game, he had 40 points, 11 assists, and 10 boards on 63% shooting. He also shot 40% from three, and it was a perfect 100% from the line. But what makes it even more special is how Bird trash talked Sean Kemp during their first ever matchup. I go to the game on the early bus. I get there. They come out on the court. They say, hey, Sean, uh, you're starting the night against uh, Larry. And I was like, what the hell? I'm all for it, though. You know? So um, the x man, he didn't play. He had a sore knee. But my point to you is this. Uh, Larry gave me, he gave me, uh, he gave me 50 and three quarters. Oh my! <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was hitting everything, man, and he talked to me the whole entire game. He what did he say? He do. Well, first of all, he asked me to jump ball. He said, "You the cat that broke all my records in high school, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's me." He goes, "Yeah, you the one that used to dunk on my brother too, right?" Now, Eddie, and I was like, "Yeah, that's me." He said, "I got you to tonight." So every shot he was calling. At the defensive end, he would tell me, he'd be like, when I get down to the other end, I'm gonna pump face you, get a hand one on you, look at you, <laughs> pull off the glass. That's how cold Larry yeah. Bird was. And Kemp in that short video said Bird scored 50, but as you guys know, Bird actually had 40. But if you go back and watch the film, Larry Bird at 33, he couldn't walk, he couldn't move, he wasn't fast, he was slow, and he still dominated a young and athletic Sean Kemp. And speaking of young and athletic, the exact same year in 89, Bird also dominated a young Michael Jordan. In this game, Bird was still 33 and Jordan was 25. And actually, it was Bird's second game back from Achilles surgery the previous year. So in this game, Bird had 27 points, 9 boards, 7 assists on 50% shooting. Jordan had 24 points, 6 boards and 5 assists on 55% shooting. And when it mattered most in the fourth quarter, Bird shut up in a big way, scoring 9 points on 75% shooting. And to add the cherry on top, he had the game-winning jump shot over Jordan as well as Pippen. Bird low, Bird low. You can't double yet, now you can quickly. Bird's jumper, good! Now sticking with the Michael Jordan theme, seven years later, he would have his own chance to own a rookie, that being Kevin Garnett. 
and coming to this matchup, the Bulls had an astounding 50-6 record en route to their 72-win season. The Timberwolves, to put it lightly, weren't exactly on pace to be the best team of all time. But in this game in Chicago, with a minute left in the third quarter, the Bulls were down by two points. But after that moment, Kevin Garnett would have a brief moment of trash-talking the legend Michael Jordan. We come out of the fourth quarter, KG, like, man, keep going at his ass. Serve him. He can't guard you. Yo, keep killing that nigga, yo. Keep killing that nigga. Boning you, yo. Straight up. You have a good game, yo. Keep going. I was quiet. I'm looking at him like, just chill. The mic was literally right there. That nigga right here. That mic can hear me. So I double balance here. Yeah. Okay. Keep going at him. <laughs> Why? Wow, strong for this dude, man. So as I say that, I feel it. The mic looked at me, looked at KG. Hands on hips, legs locked. The nigga stabbed me for about 15 seconds. I was like, Mike, he don't know the rules of the game, man. He's just a young puppy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, look, Mike, he don't really know how we... I see him and Mike having a conversation. So he's like, he don't really know he excited. Whatever. So now MJ on the back leg joint. Okay, you talking? Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, huh? And Mike looked at him again like, okay. Looked at me like, okay. I said, what you looking at me like that for, right? <laughs> I can't even really describe the next like six to seven <laughs> minutes of play, yo. Came into the went to the fourth quarter, man. That man got about eight, 17 quick. We down 25 now. It was just that two. Mad looking at KG, looking at me, looking at KG. It got bad quick, <laughs> yo. And actually, if you go back and watch the film, after KG trash talked Mike, Jordan had 19 total points, including 13 in the fourth quarter, in route to a Bulls blowout victory. Now, looking past Jordan's time in the Bulls, we looked to his years on the Washington Wizards. And being 38 years old, Jordan somehow got the best of a young Vince Carter, who was 24. In this game in Toronto in the first quarter, Vince scored 19 points and had 23 at the half, and Toronto led by 6 points. But when it came to the second half of this game, an old Wash Michael Jordan locked down a prime Vince Carter. In the second half, Vince made 0, I repeat, 0 field goals, had zero total points, and was a complete non-factor in a Washington comeback victory. Vince looking on Michael Jordan. Right up on him. Carter with eight on the shot clock. Michael Jordan is talking to Vince Carter right now. Vince doesn't look too happy about what he's hearing. And Michael is known for his trash talking as well. Oh, he's very good at getting in your head, reminding you. The jump shot is now available. Vince wants the ball, posting up Michael. Spinning, in and out. Vince Carter looks numbed by this afternoon's experience. 23 points in the first half, and bageled in the second. Now moving on from the GOAT, we have the GOAT power forward, that being Tim Duncan. And one time Duncan got the best of a rookie, it was in 2012, versus a young <laughs> Anthony Davis. In this game, Timmy was 36, and AD was 19. And when it was all said and done, Tim had 20. You're not winning that matchup, AD. I'm sorry. You're not winning that. 24 points, 11 boards, 3 blocks, on 68% shooting. AD, in his own right, had a pretty good game, having 21 points, 7 boards on 50% shooting. But when it came down to the big time moments, Duncan outshined a young AD, having 8 points in the last 3 minutes. So Tim at 36 could still hang with the young, great power forwards. And also, when it came to big time centers, he owned those guys in 2012. As in an early season matchup, the Spurs put the Sacramento Kings and DeMarcus Cousins. And midway through the fourth quarter, Cousins tried to bully an older Tim Duncan. He's got to be very, very uh, pleased. That's just bang. Oh my gosh. Oh, that, that's an offensive foul by any definition. I mean, bang. <laughs> <laughs> but as usual, Duncan, he was stoic and he did not back down. In the last six minutes of that game, he had three blocks all into Marcus Cousins, including eight points, 100% shooting. And in total for the game, he had 23 points, five blocks on 75% shooting. A prime Cousins had 14 points, five fouls on 28% shooting. So even at 36, Duncan could hang with the best of them and showed the young guys they still had a lot to learn. Now sticking with one of the great modern day legends, next up we have LeBron James. And one of LeBron's best ever old guy moments came in the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals in Game 7 versus a young Jason Tatum. <laughs> That's no matchup either. LeBron gonna kill him. At this point, LeBron was 33 and Tatum was 20. And in this Game 7, it was back and forth. Cleveland had the lead. Boston had the lead. It was a very, very tight game until the final 7 minutes. 
as around the seven minute mark, Tatum made the fatal mistake of taunting LeBron James. With 6.45 remaining, Tatum drives down and throws it down! Wow! Now after that dunk, Cleveland will have to score Boston 16-7, with LeBron having 8 points in the final 6 minutes. And LeBron once again showed everyone he wasn't quite ready to give up his stranglehold on the Eastern Conference. And in total for this game, LeBron had 35 points, 15 boards on assists, on 50% shooting, and a spectacular Game 7 performance. Now fast forwarding 2 years to 2020, LeBron once again had a big time statement game, this time versus MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. And at this point, LeBron was on the Lakers at 35 years old, and Giannis was on the Bucks at 25. And coming to this game was a big time MVP battle, and there was some bad blood in the previous matchup where Giannis crowned himself as the king of the NBA. Out of vowels on the floor, Antetokounmpo. Free board! Wow. And then you got Giannis out here looking like he's Ray Allen. So coming to this game, LeBron <laughs> had some added motivation and needed an MVP statement game. And as you could have guessed, that's what happened. As LeBron in this game had 37 points, 8 boards, 8 assists, on 57% shooting. In the second half, he had a game high 25 points. Game step back three. It's good. James inside. Banks that one in. And looking past all that, LeBron's defense was the most impressive thing from this game. As when he guarded Giannis, he shot two for six and had two turnovers. And keep in mind, this is MVP Giannis versus an older LeBron James who's 35. So once again, a big time statement game from an old NBA GOAT versus a young up and coming all-star. Now last but not least, we have one more matchup between Kobe Bryant and Kyrie Irving in- R.I.P. Kobe, man. R.I.P. Kobe, always. Every time I see Kobe, man, you gotta say R.I.P., man. It's crazy, man. Still to this day, it's just crazy. 2012. In this matchup, Kobe was 34 and Kyrie was 20. And coming to this game, both players were fairly close, and Kyrie actually trash-talked Kobe, saying he could beat him in a 1v1. And funny enough, in their first ever matchup, Kobe actually had 42 points on Kyrie in Los Angeles. So apparently after that game, Kyrie didn't learn his lesson, and trash talk Kobe in the 2012 offseason. So coming the following year, Kobe, during the 2013 season, definitely had that seed planted in his mind. And in his second ever game versus Kyrie, he once again had 42 points, 5 boards on 57% shooting. And at 34 years old, he showed once again he could lock down the elite ball handlers in the NBA. Action behind the back, couldn't shake it. Bryant still an all-world defender and he blocked it! Kobe Bryant says, bring it at me. Kobe Bryant is one of the best defensive players in the league. So that right there was our final player matchup, and that is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Alrighty, that was a good video right there. That was a good video right there. But uh, yeah, on to the next video, man. We're going to wrap it up here. Appreciate all the love and support you have been showing me. Going to keep grinding out, man. We're going to keep running out with these good old videos, man. I've been definitely finding some jewels lately. And, um, yeah, that's about it. If you got some videos you want me to do, leave them down in the comments down below. Or you can hit my email at debtfullyboy9 at gmail.com. And uh, one thing I do want to say now, that LeBron and Giannis, was that the same game? or Because it looked like, to me, it was like third or fourth quarter and Milwaukee was up. But then when he said something again about LeBron, it was like the first quarter, like 55 to 54. So I don't know. I think the Bucks might have still won that game. I'm not sure. I don't know. But that's one thing that just stood out to me. And, um, yeah, that's about it, man. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button. Turn on that bell, man. I'm uploading every single day. And, uh, yeah, that's about it, man. I love y'all. I'm out. Peace.